This is Twit. Nokia is back in the hardware business. The company unveiled today a new $249 tablet called the Nokia N1. The tablet runs Android Lollipop with Nokia Z Launcher user interface. And by the way, Z Launcher lets you select apps by drawing big letters on the screen with your finger. And in related news, Nokia put the public beta version of the Z Launcher on the Google Play Store so anyone with an Android device can now use it. Uh, Joe Panateri, this news is interesting in multiple ways. The first and foremost, it looks exactly like an iPad. There, I guess Nokia is in the, in the clone business. Yeah, you know, I, th I think we're having or the vendors are having some trouble here trying to diversify or differentiate their products. Um, so, so as you point out, uh, this looks a lot like uh, the market leader. We're seeing something similar with HP today coming out with a uh, combination tablet and PC that looks a lot like Surface Pro 3. So I think as these designs get smaller and smaller, it's more and more difficult to stand out. And then part two of this is, I think some people are, are, are confused in terms of, is this a Nokia product or a Microsoft product? And yes, Microsoft's done a pretty good job so far of, of rebranding most of the smartphone technology it has acquired from Nokia. But, but I think a lot of people forget that there's still this standalone Nokia company banging out tablets. It's even more confusing than that because Microsoft still sells the Nokia branded Lumia 2520 Windows RT tablet. So there are two right. Nokia branded tablets that are sold by two different companies. That's different. a new one. I don't recall that situation ever taking place. Now, the thing about the N1 is that in addition to looking just like the iPad mini three, it's actually slimmer. It's actually lighter and it costs half the price of the iPad mini three. So it's kind of like for some users, it'll be the, the 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 better version of the iPad Mini 3. And one of the interesting things about it, like the iPad Mini 3 to a certain extent, is that it's a reversible uh, port. In this case, the USB-C connector, one of the first uh, that we've seen. And, of course, that's going to be a standard. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Apple pioneered its own proprietary standard where you don't have to worry about which way is up when you plug in uh, your tablet. Uh, just, just to quickly run through the specs, the tablet has a 7.9-inch screen, just like the iPad Mini 3. It has a 248 uh, by 1536 resolution display, pretty uh, run-of-the-mill specs overall, an 8-megapixel main camera, 5-megapixel main camera. And this, interestingly, is going on sale. The first market for, for this device is China. China uh, is the it's going to hit China in about early 2015 at some point and elsewhere later in unspecified countries and dates and Foxconn is the manufacturer. So this we talked about this yesterday, Joe. This was the big um, a mystery product that uh, Nokia teased yesterday and they showed yeah. the box and the box looked like an Apple TV. So everybody was spec, including us, were speculating <laughs> that this was a, a TV box. Right, right. Well, uh, no, it's not a TV box. You know, I, I think one of the other challenges you mentioned here, Mike, is is this packaging, right? And when I go to a retailer like a Best Buy, um, there are now so many similar tablet products on the market. I don't know where to start. There's there's the external packaging to start with, but then when you even when you go under the covers and you start going up and down the aisles, yeah, I think Nokia and others are going to have challenges going forward, just trying to stand out from the crowd and all the re uh, on the retail shelves, especially when you got Black Friday coming and everyone's going to be doing discounts. So I'll be curious to see how soon they bring this into the U.S. market. And then uh, if and when they do, how Nokia is going to try and uh, differentiate from all of the other tablets on the market. It just seems like overkill at this point. Yeah, and Nokia does have advantages that they're apparently not uh, leveraging here. They have some of the best cameras in the industry, at least mm -hmm. for smartphones, they did. Imagine if they came out with a tablet that had a really, really amazing camera. That would be a differentiator. They have all kinds yep. of great technology that's not hardware-based. For example, they have their their uh, Here Maps solution is fantastic. They've got all kinds of really great technology. And if they could integrate all of that technology and have it be exclusive to Nokia products, those would be big differentiators. But what I see here so far, it doesn't seem all that differentiating. And like you say, it's just going to blend into the to the rest and they're going to struggle with this one probably. Yeah. And the other piece I would add is, is maybe with that camera technology, Mike, um, my mother-in-law, for instance, has an iPad. Um, she's got a separate camera. She can't make heads or tails of either of them. If she had a, a high-end tablet with a great camera, um, she'd be interested. So, uh, you know, I wonder if, if these uh, tablet makers will begin to microsegment the market.